from 1979 to 1982. A string of shocking murders and disappearances rocked Idaho and Washington's idyllic Lewiston-Clarkston metropolitan areas. The crimes remain unsolved to this day, but authorities believe a singular individual may be responsible. It was 1979's annual Asotin County Fair, which comes to town at the end of every April. The fair began in 1941, drawing a fresh crowd to the usually quiet village of Asotin. With less than 1,000 permanent residents in the 70s, a number that has mostly stayed the same in current times. Overall, it seemed like the perfect place to raise a child, in the fresh mountain air along the Snake River. As each April rolls around, the joyous celebration of the fair is marred by a distant memory of a little girl who vanished all those years ago. Her name was Chrissy White. Chrissy lived with her mother and stepfather after her parents divorced when she was an infant. Chrissy was a bright young girl who regularly attended her local Lutheran church. Summer was a few months away, and 12-year-old Chrissy had lots planned. She was going on two camping trips and was spending four weeks with her dad. Chrissy watched the opening parade on the morning of April 28th, after which she went to help a close friend with the horse at the fairgrounds. Chrissy was supposed to attend the rest of the fair, but heat stroke from the previous day had left her feeling unwell. Detective Jackie Nichols, who has tried to solve the mystery since it happened, explained that Chrissy called her mom at 2.30 p.m., said she wasn't feeling well, and asked her mom to come to get her. Chrissy's mom couldn't come to fetch her because she didn't have a car. Available sources provide slightly conflicting information about what happened next. News network Clue TV says that Chrissy's mom asked her to walk five blocks from her friend's house to the corner two blocks away from Chrissy's home. She could watch her daughter walk the final stretch home from that distance. Other sources suggest that Chrissy's mom told her to rest at her friend's house until she felt well enough to walk home. We do know that Chrissy never made it home. She was last seen riding her new white bicycle with a basket, her prized possession. Chrissy nor the bike have ever been found. Weeks after she vanished, her school papers were found scattered across a field outside Asotin. The unexplained disappearance of a young Asotin resident left the community confused and fearful, with far more questions than answers. Little did they know, a string of disappearances would follow. 22-year-old Kristen David was a senior at the University of Idaho in Moscow. Some of you may be familiar with the location due to the recent case of Brian Koberger and the Moscow murders. Kristen was majoring in broadcast journalism and political science. On June 26, 1981, Kristen was riding her bike a reasonably long distance along Highway 95, traveling from Moscow to Lewiston to visit family. She also had a new job starting. Kristen never arrived home. On July 4th, 1981, a horrific discovery was made. Kristen's dismembered remains had been found in garbage bags along the Snake River edge. The pieces were wrapped in newspaper pages from April of that year before being placed inside the garbage bags. The clothes Kristen was wearing when she disappeared and her bike were never found. When police started tracing Kristen's last known movements, they found several people who claimed to have seen her along Highway 95 being approached by a man driving a brown car not far outside Genesee, Idaho. Apparently, that same car was seen stopping near other women on that route. On September 12th, 1982, the Lewiston community was shaken by not one, but three sudden disappearances on the same day. 18-year-old Jacqueline Miller, who went by Brandy, and 21-year-old Christina Nelson were stepsisters last seen leaving Christina's apartment. The women planned to visit a nearby grocery store and then go to their shift at the Lewiston Civic Theater, where they worked as janitors. 
they had every intention of returning home soon, as shown by Christina's note left behind for her boyfriend explaining such. Christina and Brandy vanished somewhere between leaving that apartment and arriving for work. On that same evening, 35-year-old Stephen Pearsall was dropped off by his girlfriend at Lewis Civic Center, where he was also an employee. But Stephen's visit that evening was to practice the clarinet and do some laundry. We know he made it into the building as his clarinet was found inside. His washing, however, was missing. In the aftermath of these three bizarre disappearances, authorities received reports about two women and a man hitchhiking outside Lewiston. Nothing ever came of this potential lead. Some rumors began floating around of the three leaving to join a cult. This was proved false 18 months later when Brandy and Christina's bodies were found on March 19, 1984, on a hillside along Highway 3, 40 miles outside of Lewiston. Stephen knew the young women well and was considered a brotherly figure to them. Upping and leaving seemed out of character for Stephen, and while some theorized he had something to do with Christina and Brandy's disappearance, it is widely considered that he fell victim to the same monster who killed them. In 1984, Idaho State Police made an announcement stating that Otis Toole had confessed to the murder of Kristen David and was considered a suspect, although two other men had also admitted their involvement in the crime. However, in 2009, a retired detective from Lewiston stated that Toole had been excluded as a suspect. In 1995, the Lewiston police suggested that Kristen, Stephen, and Brandy might have been murdered together inside the Lewiston Civic Theater by an employee who also resided in the same house where Christina White had disappeared in 1979. In 1998, the Lewis police declared that they believed Kristen's murder was connected to the other four disappearances and killings. A documentary called Confluence, released in 2011, implicated Lance Jeffrey Voss as an unnamed suspect in the case. Voss, born in Chicago in 1945, served in the Navy from 1965 to 1968, during which time his ship docked in Hong Kong, Hawaii, Washington, and California. According to police reports, in June 1972, a person contacted the police to report a suspicious individual outside the Willow Glen Mortuary Chapel in San Jose, California. When officers arrived at the scene, they discovered Voss carrying a flashlight, camera, and knife with the window screen leaning against the building. Voss was arrested and charged with burglary, but the prosecutor offered him the opportunity to plead guilty to trespassing. Voss never explained why he was at the mortuary, but it is worth noting that two teenage girls were inside the building that night. The house in Asseton, which Chrissy White visited on the night she disappeared, belonged to Voss's girlfriend, Patricia Brennan. Voss admitted to investigators that he had seen Chrissy before her disappearance. During the search efforts, Chrissy's family members informed the police that Voss had approached them and offered his assistance. The police report indicated that Voss had declined to take a polygraph test. However, the police did conduct a voice stress analysis during questioning, which suggested deception. Voss acknowledged that he had seen Stephen Pearsall on the night he went missing. According to Voss, Stephen left the theater around 9 p.m. and Voss left shortly afterward to have pizza at a local restaurant. Then Voss made a surprising statement. He claimed that he returned to the theater at 10 p.m. and slept on a couch until 4 a.m., insisting that he heard nothing unusual that night. Voss was never arrested, and the case remains unsolved. In 2018, Investigation Discovery aired Cold Valley, a two-part documentary series that delved into the case. The series unveiled connections to three additional cases outside of the state, including one from 1963. On August 3, 1963, 
the lifeless body of eight-year-old Diane Taylor was discovered behind an alley in a neighborhood in Chicago, Illinois. Diane had suffered stab wounds and had numerous shallow cuts on her body. The fatal blow was a stab wound to her heart. Authorities suspect that Diane was murdered elsewhere and then discarded in the alley. The autopsy report indicates that she had been killed approximately 36 hours before the discovery of her body. According to witnesses, young Diane was spotted walking along the alley behind the Austin YMCA, where she regularly attended day camp. Her blue framed glasses, three keys, blue billfold, white socks, tennis shoes, and navy blue shorts were never recovered. The case of Diane's murder remains unresolved. However, it is worth mentioning that Voss resided in the vicinity, attended Austin High School, and served as Diane's YMCA youth camp counselor. Still, authorities couldn't find anything concrete that linked Voss to the case. Throughout the years, Detective Jackie Nichols has meticulously compiled binders filled with investigation notes and case details pertaining to Christina White and the other four victims believed to be connected to a single suspect. Detective Nichols has committed to relentlessly pursuing the suspect and bringing some measure of closure to the families profoundly affected by these tragedies. Speaking to Clue TV in April 2022, Nichols expressed her optimism for a breakthrough in the Christina White case, hoping that a resolution in any related cases could potentially lead to progress in solving Christina's case. Despite other casework that comes across her desk, which she gives her all to, Detective Nichols spends much of her spare time working on these cases. As she explained to Clue TV, the person of interest's DNA has not been tested because they have never been convicted of a felony level crime, which precludes their DNA from being entered into any database. Detective Nichols added that there is currently no viable DNA evidence in any of the cases. Nevertheless, law enforcement continues to explore every possible avenue in the pursuit of justice. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments. And most importantly, please subscribe and ring the bell. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a new intriguing case.